just showing resistances again with the uh, with the wipers the um, that common ground track I've got the black on and on one of the channel wipers I've got the red one on and that's uh, as you can see the wipers up the far end and that's 470 K and if I move that all the way back down the other end you see that moves right down to practically zero if I change the um, if I change that uh, you can see that it's more like um, it's 20 20 or so ohms uh, that's still there even when it's right up the end and uh, that goes for uh, that goes for both uh, excuse me uh, both both tracks uh, so at the moment uh, just put it back up to 2 meg range so if I put that all the way up that end that's zero but if I move that from one end to the other you can see that the other end is now at 470k so that's what's happening with the resistances of the crossfader uh, so this is the final word on the crossfader I've got two audio sources one of them's an iPod and the other one's my phone and that needs to come in before the crossfader down down here's um, the crossfader or at least that's my symbol for the crossfader anyway um, the for the crossfader to work um, it really needs to see um, an input impedance uh, of something greater than what's what you would actually see at the output of the um, of the devices themselves so that's 33k in line and wherever you see a ground on the circuit all those ground circuit grounds uh, signal grounds are connected together from uh, both audio sources all the way through to the output and also the um, <clears throat> the common on the wipers for the uh, crossfader they're all grounds and on the output um, it needs to be a little higher than I first thought and uh, 33k uh, on the output seems to work okay as well and the crossfader needs to be uh, you can see the um, the two right channels go to one of the resistor tracks so there's the right on the bottom and the right from the top and same with the same with the lefts and so when the wiper moves one way or another ground shifts from uh, attenuating uh, one channel either the phone gets attenuated to ground or the uh, iPod gets attenuated to ground so on the output <coughs> Uh, one of the with the fader all the way at one end, uh, one of those channels, uh, the audio signal will get through all right, and the other one uh, has been um, attenuated to ground, and you won't get. I mean, you'll still get a very small signal coming through, but uh, not uh, big enough to affect anything on the output. So, just to demonstrate physically uh, coming in I believe the uh, let's have a look the iPod is going into the top lines so um, red and green left and right channel one at the top and red and green left and right for the phone input on the bottom and there's the output just to a little uh, mixer that's good enough to run two speakers and there's the crossfader itself so here if the fade is all the way to the left that will attenuate the iPod and if the fade is all the way to the right that'll attenuate the phone signal and so I'll just turn the iPod on let's press play and you can't hear anything yet because that's attenuated all the way and I'll press play on the phone a little bit of uh, Brotherhood Creed on the phone. Faders all the way to the left. And we've got a bit of uh, Metallica on the iPod. And uh, I should warn you, this uh, crossfade is a bit dodgy. It's very scratchy. So, just as we... <laughs> And 
back again. Okay, I think that's really all I need to show you. Um, I hope that helps.